Good afternoon, everybody. This is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defence Universe, getting you live from New Delhi. We are here at the JW Marriott at the Aviation India 2024, and here we have with us a name which is known throughout the aerospace world in our country. There, it's a face we all know, and uh, I feel sad that we I don't have a video to do to show it to you as ever smiling face. We are here with Mr. Praveen P.A., who is Director Aerospace and Defence with Government of Telangana. Welcome, Praveen, to ADU's podcast. Thank you very much, Sangeeta. It's always a pleasure to be I know, speaking to you. And uh, Praveen, we are meeting here at the Indo-British event, uh, which is Aviation India. And uh, this is one of those uh, things, you know, that uh, we look forward to participation from the country. But uh, if you would have seen participation from a state is a rarity. And uh, from what I know, it, yours was the only state represented by you here. And uh, Telangana also got the best state award and all. So I think I'd really like to understand from you, what is the government thinking when it focuses so strongly on aerospace? It's been a privilege to be in this panel. In fact, I was, I, I was given the opportunity to give a keynote on the Telangana story, how it won the best state award four times consecutively uh, from government of India. Uh, and, uh, you know, the same story I would like to kind of express in terms of the government of Telangana had a focus on aerospace and defense right from the beginning. We have identified uh, AND sector and space as a thrust uh, focus area for us. We have also uh, uh, had dedicated infrastructure plant around it, one of the first aviation or aerospace SC sets in the country. The Adipatla Aerospace Seat was uh, in Hyderabad by the state government. We have multiple aerospace parks and multiple hardware parks, east, uh, electronics parks, composite parks, etc. created to cater to the various diverse industries which come together to make the aerospace and uh, defense industry. Uh, the government also had a, a very progressive policy called TSI Pass which allowed uh, time-bound approvals. All approvals are given in 15 days to 30 days based on self-certification and uh, if there's a delay it's considered as deemed approval so the industry has found it extremely easy to kind of come have a soft landing and then get going quickly. Uh, we also have a fairly uh, robust incentive structure, which is uh, fairly flexible as well. Uh, for all our larger projects, it's called the mega projects, uh, we have uh, customized tailor-made policies, which ensure that the companies get the value which they're looking for, which is uh, competitive not just amongst the other states, but also from the offers which are received from the other countries. So we've been able to meet the aspirations and manage to get almost all the large OEMs in aerospace and defense sector to come to Hyderabad now. So we have today the only manufacturing facility of Lockheed Martin in India in partnership with Tata's. Uh, in fact, Tata's have got their 90% manufacturing uh, under the aerospace in Hyderabad. They've got uh, several joint ventures, one with Lockheed Martin, one with Boeing, one with GE, and now with Airbus. So all these uh, you know, units independently are kind of investing, committing repeat investments every two few years. And this has been the trend. Uh, uh, another success story which we'd really like to kind of are proud of are Safran's investment. Safran has been having five joint ventures in Bangalore for several decades. But when they want to go solo, they evaluated several states and finally decided on Hyderabad. The very small investment of 60 crores in 2018, 2020, they found the going goods. They committed a 450 crores aero engine parts manufacturing facility. 2022, they announced the largest engine MRO for CFM engines globally in Hyderabad with an investment of 1,500 crores. And without our asking, they also shifted an 800-seater IT division to Hyderabad. So that has become, and we already had the CFM engine training center. So five investments in a very limited period of time. Uh, and uh, a large number of foreign OEMs have now started looking at Hyderabad as a global supply chain hub for them. So we have multiple JVs uh, from the Israeli companies, from the French companies and the US companies. Uh, on one side, they do JVs for joint manufacturing, but they also source a large number of components uh, from the MSME space out of Hyderabad. Now, how to be that's a unique story. You know, we had around a dozen uh, DRDO labs and DPOCs for six to seven decades, each of them employing around three to 5,000 people. And many of these old uh, scientists 
or other uh, you know entrepreneurial scientists had branched out to set up their own units they start off with defense manufacturing today we have a vibrant cluster of around 1500 msmes catered to aerospace defense and space industry there's a convergence at uh, at at the at manufacturing level because they're all manufacturing precision engineering products whether it's electronics or the uh, the components and so most of the companies uh, when they come into hyderabad region they have composite suppliers they have got electronic suppliers they have got precision engineered parts suppliers so it's 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 a very very wholesome ecosystem for anyone to come and settle so that's probably one reason why hyderabad is truly the most preferred uh, uh, you know global manufacturing destination for the oems in india and uh, we are getting a lot more inquiries from uh, the other oems and uh, even the existing guys who have done it every two years we look at every oem who has come and had made repeat investments yeah. and that shows the robustness of the economy right absolutely and uh, you know when we talk of a state getting so much involved into one sector of governance uh, what what is its role in creating that ecosystem for freshers which means startups what are you doing because startups have got a they have they give a very good feedback of telangana as a government so what is it what is it that you've created for them what is the funding that you've planned for them is it easy for them to get everything on a platter uh, what is it like the government of telangana had a great focus on innovation in fact has set up the largest incubation center t hub you know which uh, hosts more than 2000 startups uh, at any point in time Uh, we not only did that, we also had the largest hardware incubator because aerospace and defense is a combination of hardware and software. And typically, incubators mean software incubation, right? So we also had a prototyping maker center created where people can come with an idea and then come out with a prototype product out. So between these, and we also have a women-only entrepreneurship cell called V Hub, which is also doing what a lot of women entrepreneurs are now coming in, and almost. because of the uh, proximity to all the aerospace activity a lot of the startups are also kind of making products trying out uh, various solutions for the industry and uh, we have uh, from a government side we have supported the innovation programs of boeing boeing horizon x which was hosted in Hyde, uh, in nt hub with colins aerospace in fatten brickney we had done acceleration programs with them we supported certain uh, uh, startups promoted by the airbus bis lab so we work with the various oems and the startup engagement because this industry is something where the oems determine a lot of things so that the 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 provision of connection uh, that link with for the startup to the large oem is what we do and we have done effectively well we were one of the first incubators to be associated with idex and in fact in all the dis programs we see the comp- the contribution from telangana based startups are fairly high uh right now we have got on 80 to 100 startups catering to aerospace and defense in our in the t hub cluster and uh, more and more of them are being offered mentoring and are also encouraged to kind of really tap onto the opportunities and particularly after the make in india uh campaign a lot of opportunities a lot of challenge areas get uh, posed to these startups and many of them have taken up and many are now part of various stage of funding both in the rdo tdf as well as the this one so uh another aspect is once you have a capacity building in one area of this thing you can actually translate that to the other area so you know the same startups who are working in aviation or aerospace will easily move into defense and space when the requirement or the opportunity arises so we now have uh, a, a good quantum of competent startups who can pick on challenges all right so Sup- well supported by the state infrastructure right absolutely and very recently you had a visit from the canadian uh, aircraft manufacturer and uh, de havilland uh, we saw that covered in the media and uh, is telangana also trying to attract foreign oems to come and settle their ma- manufacturing lines uh parts manufacturing uh, here apart from safran i'm not talking of safran i'm talking of air, you know air frame makers in fact uh, in the last 8 uh, eight, eight and a half years that i've been this role this has been my prime to function i used to be seen in most of the domestic and international events speaking to the oem speaking to the their tier ones to see what level of engagement we can do with the indian ecosystem and many of the many of the oems are now finding that uh, the current traditional areas for the manufacturer are very very Uh, costly and they are really looking forward to uh, you know shifting a lot of their operations to low cost destinations that is one second there is a talent crunch everywhere and in fact they are also looking for trained manpower which india has in abundance and uh, telangana in particular because of the 
uh, the sustained period of military manufacturing, there's a lot of trained manpower available if they were to kind of start something there. Third is the competence in com the competent manufacturing, and you know, so we have a large number of MSMEs today who are already onboarded on the OEM supply chains of Rolls Royce, Boeing, Lo Airbus, Lockheed, etc. So someone who's got certified by one OEM will be an easy catch for another. So you know, because they already gone through a lot of uh, series of tests. So we got large number of these companies there, and together, if we were to put it up. I think we are, uh, you know, you, you mentioned about de Havilland. De Havilland wants to set up an aircraft integration plant in Canada, but they want to source all their components and they have identified Hyderabad as a region. And they, we also facilitate a lot of meetings for them with the MSMEs and they're quite happy. And they're also giving orders to them, already given orders to them. And that's how we grow. I mean, I mean, I don't have the ambition that the aircraft manufacturing to come in here, but if a significant chunk of the components and systems subsystem get built in Hyderabad and then get exported, we are good to go you know, in terms of kind of getting a lot of high value jobs created in the, in the state and a lot of uh, invest, capital investment because the aviation industry is fairly, aerospace industry is fairly capital intensive. That uh, one uh, test cell, engine test cell which Safran is building is around 450 crores. So for an OEM to commit that kind of investment in a, a region like Hyderabad, huh. it takes a lot of confidence building measures for a, the foreign OEM to kind of do yes. that. I think that we have been fairly successful. Yes, absolutely. And uh, one very important uh, you know, factor when it comes to human resource development is training. Uh, how much does the government of Telangana stress on training in the aerospace sector? We have identified that any state government, I mean, for that matter, any other region can offer land for free, can offer uh, incentives, initial incentives, etc. But that's not the primary concern for a, a very, very technically uh, sophisticated manufacturing process involving aerospace industry. Because what they require is an ecosystem. What they require is adequate amount of trained manpower, because poaching is also something which is prevalent in the industry. And in Hyderabad, that's what they formed. And in fact, we also had proactively engaged with a lot of foreign universities. Cranfield University UK has been training a lot of our armed forces and uh, defense establishments earlier. We have a tie-up with them from at a state level. We have identified uh, an MRO training center, and uh, a technician training center in France, who supplies technicians to Airbus and the French industry, Aerocambus Aquitaine. So we have a tie-up with that. In fact, for the last seven years, Aerocambus Aquitaine has got a resource, permanent resource based in Hyderabad, who is actually catering to all the requirements. So it's, what we provide is, uh, be it Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, Cranfield University, or Aerocambus, they have an array of training programs. So these training programs are need-based. The industry will kind of opt in, and then the trainers will come and train the, train the, the employees. So what it helps is these employees needn't travel abroad to, for the training. So there's a lot of cost saved there. And uh, so it's like the international skilling available at local cost, which is made available. And that there's no compulsion. These are all made available by the state. Whoever wants to offer it can offer it. And we also have a major component of the incentives spread on the capacity building and training, etc. So there a lot of reimburse, training reimbursement, etc. is included in the incentive structure, which also encourages both sides, the, the OEM who is probably setting up something here as well as, uh, you know, training institutions to tap onto it and then train as many uh, youth as possible to get into the work stream. Right. And, uh, you know, you're going to, in less than a month, uh, you've got a very major uh, program which is going to happen there, an event which is a French collaboration. So is this the first time you're doing it or uh, is it now an agenda to interact with various countries of the world, get their companies to come here and see and then, you know, liaise and create a platform at the end of the day for the two countries uh, for the defense industry, aerospace and defense industry? Uh, Aeromart, you're referring to Aeromart yes. Hyderabad. Aeromart Hyderabad is happening on July 1 to 3 at mm -hmm. uh, HICC in the hotel. Mm -hmm. And this is organized by BCI Aerospace. BCI Aerospace is the B2B business partner for Paris Air Show. And they also do the supply chain meet for Boeing, supply chain meet for Leonardo, Mitsubishi, etc. So a fairly connected uh, a group. And the objective of tapping onto them to do an international uh, B2B meet and conference in Hyderabad was to bring in all those decision makers from various countries to Hyderabad, have an interaction with the MSMEs there and the large companies there, large Indian companies there, and have productive, fruitful discussions which translate into business. And it's not just a conference you come and see and go, but the focus is more on the B2B mates. 
and we've got fairly good response. We got uh, uh, Airbus, Boeing, Safran, Embraer, etc., from the larger OEMs who are participating big time, taking large stalls, etc. We also interestingly have got HAL, BDL, ECIL, and the governments, the DPSUs from the defense side participating, and a large number of. Uh, Predominantly Hyderabad based MSC, but we also have interest from Tamil Nadu, from Karnataka, so companies are coming down from there taking stalls and it's going to be a fabulous event. Right, absolutely. Uh, Praveen, is there anything else you'd like to add from your side? Uh, see, this the, the growth of aerospace and defense, I think Hyderabad is probably a role model for every other state government who's probably looking at and developing that sector. And uh, we have a playbook already. What required, uh, what support is required from the central government again is to really have policies for aerospace to kind of really encourage the industry to come in. We don't have an aerospace policy, we don't have a PLI for the aerospace, defense, space, etc. If that come in, will be a boon for the industry. Uh, and otherwise, I think uh, the industry is quite happy with the uh, ease of doing business experience which they had with us and we really look forward for more such partnerships. And we're also looking for regional partnership. In fact, I forgot to mention, we have been discussing with uh, the, the ecosystems like Aerospace Valley in, in, in France and uh, similar manufacturing clusters in other countries to have G2G partnerships, sister city agreements, etc., which will enable an umbrella uh, you know, uh, arrangement under which the industries can talk to each other and find synergies and work both ways for the development of the industry. And that has really helped us uh, to get more traction. Right, absolutely. Thank you very much, Praveen. It was wonderful speaking with you. And when we meet next, and we have, I'm sure we'll have much more uh, from your side. Uh, it's wonderful. I think at the end of the day, the show in Delhi is closed on a good note. And all the best to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.